four years. They announced this DLC four years ago in 2018. My biggest criticism towards the base game of Cuphead is that a handful of bosses don't feel up to the standards in comparison to the top dogs. The creativity and theming of each fight is fantastic. I have zero complaints about Cuphead's style, but some of the technical aspects could use some tweaks. Ribby and Croaks feel slow, Grim Matchstick and Rumor Honey Bottom have these randomly spawning platforms which are poorly thought out and the run and gun stages feel like an afterthought instead of a main piece of the pie. But even with these small little speed bombs and I really do mean small, the base game of Cuphead is a phenomenal piece of gaming content that also doubles as some delicious eye candy to feast upon. And when they announced the DLC, all I was asking for was just more Cuphead, more zany animation, more tough as nail fights, more fun creative ideas. And again, they worked on this for four years while there was a global pandemic souring everything. But not to worry because it finally came out and man is it good. It is spicy as hell. Cuphead in the delicious last course is a beautiful shiny red cherry to put on top of a beautiful game. This really isn't a massive DLC if you're expecting repentance, shipwrecked or even survivors of the void amounts of content and you're going to be extremely disappointed. There are six new bosses, a fun little parry mini game, Miss Chalice has a playable character with some new abilities and a handful of new power-ups. That's it. Again, it isn't a buttload of stuff, but the quality of it all is mind-melting. The bosses in this DLC really are the crowning jewel. They didn't just make more of them, they went beyond what was expected of them and made some of the best boss fights in the industry. I'm not exaggerating when I say that. That I 100% mean it. Move along millennia, step aside Sans, Steve, Armstrong and Matt because you better make room for a cow woman that turns into a can of sausages. Now this is peak character design. There's a big mountain golem that a bunch of small little gnomes are dancing in front of, a crew of dogs that are piloting a gigantic robot dog plane that continuously messes up your camera. Don't look up this dog alright, you, you know what I mean. The moonshine mob is a gang of small critters and an ant either that try to fake you out of a victory. There's a, a fridge. And the best one without a doubt being Chef Salt Baker himself. J just look at that sugar cube, okay? But watch this, okay? Oh. The animation of the DLC isn't just S tier, they leaped over that grade like it's nothing. The base game looks mediocre in comparison, which I shouldn't even be allowed to say because the base game still looks amazing. Studio MDHR just kinda said screw it and decided to pour their entire soul into these bosses. Even if you have no interest in 2D animation, this DLC will make you fall in love with the medium and really start to respect and appreciate it. You guys? earn a cool prize. N a nice job, man. Uh, have, a, have a bootleg Oscar. There you go. Now, these bosses are quite a bit tougher than the ones on the main island. You can still do each and every one of them as either Cuphead or Mugman, but if you want to take it a little easier and kind of take a load off, you can equip the Astral Cookie in the charm slot and play as Miss Chalice, who gets a double jump, an extra hit point, an invisibility roll, a tweak to the parry, which is my personal favorite, and a bunch of new super to choose from. You can see playing as Miss Chalice as a sort of easy mode without making the bosses actually easier. Attacks don't get tweaked, instead it's just a lot easier to dodge projectiles and parrying pink attacks is especially a lot more fun and responsive as her. If you play as either Cuphead or Mugman, you have to awkwardly double tap the jump button which can feel kind of finicky at times. There is a fix for this but, but it's kind of a lame fix. If you play as Miss Chalice, you don't have to to double tap the jump button. Instead, you have to do a dash into the pink attacks, which feels a lot nicer and less clunky. I really wish they would do this for Cuphead and Mugman. Like, make Pea Sugar do this instead of automatically having you in parry mode when you jump. We also have some new weapons, but the only one that matters is Crack Shot because uh, this one is straight up cracked. Converge is alright, and Twist Up is extremely situational and kind of annoying. Some of the charms are kind of cool, and th that's it. 
pretty fun. I like it. You should see this DLC as a delicious dessert to feast upon after a fantastic dinner. I mean, it's literally the name of the DLC. The Delicious Last Course DLC. Studio MDHR has knocked it out of the goddamn park with this one. They should be extremely proud of what they have made. If I can expect more of this from them in the future, then I'm going to gobble it up as quickly as possible. Good job, guys. Please subscribe. It's a delicious last course. Oh, the delicious last course. One can eat their fill and still stay until the delicious last course.